pictures We're gonna learn, gonna laugh and play Discovering the answers We're gonna have a lot of fun today Let's go, go on a big adventure Discover the magic of learning Let's go, what will we discover? It's Disney Learning Adventure Time Reading and writing, writing and counting Painting and drawing That's what we'll be learning Colors and shapes, numbers and letters Welcome to our workshop of learning and fun. I seek an apprentice, and you are the one. Lessons about the world are ahead. Now that you have on your thinking cap, we can learn about places and faces from our magic world map. Traveling around the world might take Mickey 80 days, but we'll need far less time to learn how to say hello in many ways. All around the world, there are many different ways people say hello to one another. Let's visit a few countries and learn some right now. Welcome to merry old England, my chum, home of Big Ben. In England, many people speak English. So how do we say hello in England? Hello. That sounds right. Now can you say hello to Mickey in English again? Hello, Mickey. My, oh, my apprentice, you certainly are very friendly. Let's cross the English Channel and learn a different way to say hello. Now we're in France, where you'll find the Eiffel Tower. In France, many people speak French. How do we say hello to Mickey in France? Bonjour! What a lovely way to say hello. Can you repeat it for Mickey, please? Bonjour, Mickey! Very nicely done, Apprentice. Now follow me over the Alps and we'll visit a new country. Welcome to Italy and its famous Leaning Tower of Pisa. In Italy, many people speak Italian. How do we say hello to Mickey in Italy? Salve! So, how do you say hello to Mickey in Italian? Salve, Topolino! Bravo! In Italian, Mickey is called Topolino. Let's sail across the Mediterranean Sea. Now we're in Egypt, the land of the ancient pyramids. I sure hope you asked your mummy for permission to travel. In Egypt, many people speak Arabic. How do we say hello to Mickey in Egypt? Ahlan. Wonderful. Let's hear you say it again. Ahlan, Mickey. Impressive! Soon you'll be a champion greeter all around the world. Please follow me through the desert to another country. Welcome to India, home of the Taj Mahal. 
Now in India, many people speak Hindi. How do we say hello to Mickey in India? Namaste. What a beautiful sounding word. May we hear it again, please? Na-ma-ste, Mickey. Oh, thank you, Apprentice. It's like music to my ears. Now, we'll travel across the Himalayas, the highest mountain range in the world. We are now in Japan, a country made up of many islands. In Japan, many people speak Japanese. How do we say hello to Mickey in Japan? Konnichiwa. Let me hear you say hello to Mickey in Japanese once more. Konnichiwa, Mickey. Excellent! You're becoming quite an international expert. And over the Pacific Ocean we go. Oof! I'm a little tired out from the journey, but there's no time for a siesta. We've made it to Mexico, where we'll find Mayan ruins like this one. In Mexico, many people speak Spanish. How do we say hello to Mickey in Mexico? Hola. That sounds so nice and welcoming, doesn't it? Let's hear that again. Hola, Mickey. Great! Get ready, Apprentice. We're heading north to the last stop on our language adventure. We're now in the United States of America. The home of the Statue of Liberty. In the United States, many people speak English, just like in England. So how do we say hello to Mickey in the United States? Hello. I suspected as much. In fact, this time, I think I'm going to say hello to Mickey myself. Hello, Mickey. Great job, Apprentice. Now, let's say hello to our story and follow Mickey on a grand adventure as he travels around the world. Over a century ago, before airplanes filled the air, I said before they filled the... Uh, thank you. The world was a bigger place, especially for a mouse. Mickey Mouse was the caretaker of the Humbleton Orphanage. Morning, Clarabelle. Looks like you have your hooves full. Yeah hey! That looks pretty good. Despite his steadfast efforts, the orphanage was in grave financial trouble. Bills? 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 Oh, gosh. How are we ever going to pay them? Say, what's this? Dear Mr. Mouse, congratulations. You have inherited a fortune. Junk mail. Wait a minute. Let's see. To claim your inheritance, your presence is requested at the Reform Club at precisely 6 o'clock. Greedily or Scrooge McDuck. Oh, no. I'm already late. You're lit. Sorry. Do I still get my money? <laughs> we'll see, won't we? <laughs> For as the executor of your great uncle's will, it is my responsibility to carry out his instructions and bequeath to you his fortune. Oh, boy! The orphanage is saved. That is, only if I deem you to be a trustworthy, hard-working, and punctual member of society. <laughs> Gosh, pretty much everybody knows they can trust Mickey Mouse. And gee, uh, Goofy and I have been working real hard running that orphanage. And in regards to being punctual, 
You mean, uh, <laughs> like not being late? Yes. For example, arriving on time to important engagements such as this. No, oh, for once, don't live up to your name, Scrooge, and give the lad his money. Yes, the old boy's a fine chap. I'll gladly give Mr. Mouse his money. Gee, thanks. As soon as he passes a small test to prove his punctuality. Test? What kind of test? Ah, how about going round the world in 80 days? Around the world in 80 days? But he'd have to catch every train. Make every ship. And never be late. Not even once. It's the perfect test. And you will leave today, October 1st. That makes you due back here on the 19th of December at 6.30. Have a nice trip. So, um, if the old boy doesn't make it, what becomes of the money? If Mr. Mouse fails to pass the test, his entire inheritance reverts to the executor. Why, Scrooge, that's you! Exactly. Goofy! Hiya, Mickey. Just taking care of today's bills. Put down that broom and pack your bags. <laughs> We're going around the world in 80 days. Come on, let's go! What's the big hurry? We're not leaving for 80 days. So Mickey and his goofy companion were off, travelling by boat from London to Paris, where they were to catch a train. <laughs> Having barely made their connection, they took the train to Italy. Brindisi, Italy, to be exact. Goofy, do you mind? Oh, yep. <laughs> sorry. From Brindisi, they crossed the Mediterranean Sea to Egypt, then crossed the Arabian Sea to Bombay. And all was right on schedule until... <sighs> what rotten luck. There's no way I can make it now. Hey, Mickey, grab your bags. <laughs> we can take this here pachyderm. young princess looks kind of like you marrying somebody else oh well let's go wait huh? we can't go why not we gotta save her save her i said save her mickey Psst. <gasps> who are you a friend Scrooge, the old boy's reached Bombay. Looks like you'll be handing over that inheritance after all. 
Not necessarily, for I will make sure that Mr. Mickey Mouse's 80 days are numbered. Mickey seems to be right on schedule. Hopefully, he'll make it around the world in time to get his fortune. Let's take a quick break for a learning adventure. Ready? Did you know that different animals live in different places around the world? It's true. Where each animal lives depends on which environment is best for its needs. Let me show you what I mean. <laughs> it's ch 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 chilly up here. We're way up north in the Arctic region. I'm getting cold just looking at it. Only certain animals live in these cold areas. So in the cold and icy Arctic, which animal do you think you would find? Polar bears have a thick white fur coat to help keep them warm. Elephants use their trunks to gather food off of green trees. Camels thrive in hot, dry weather and can go many days without water. Let's try to figure out which of these animals lives in the Arctic. The polar bear. Correct! It's the polar bear. Because of their thick fur, polar bears are able to keep warm in cold weather. And their white fur helps them hide in the snow so that when they hunt, they're barely seen at all. Let's travel to another region of the world and learn more about the different places that animals live. Ah, we're in the rainforest. Here, the weather is usually wet, and there is an amazing variety of plants and animals, too. So which animal would you find in a rainforest? A whale likes to swim in very deep water. A camel can go days without needing water. And elephants use their trunks to gather food off of green trees. Which of the animals might you expect to find in a rainforest? The elephant. Correct once again. Trees grow in great numbers in the rainforest, making it the perfect home for our friends, the elephants. They can use their long trunks to reach high branches plentiful with food. We're off again. This time, we're in the desert. Deserts are hot and filled with sand. You won't find any oceans or lakes around these parts. Which animal would you find in the desert? Monkeys enjoy climbing green trees and like eating fruits and leaves. The camel can go days without needing water. And is this a cow? No. It's a flamingo. <laughs> of course, it's a flamingo. I can't fool you. Flamingos flourish in regions filled with flowers and plants. So which one of these animals would you find in the desert? It's the camel. Well done. Camels live in the desert. There is very little water in the desert, so it's an ideal home for the camel, who can go without drinking water for up to six months. One more stop on our learning safari. Some parts of the world are land, and some parts are water. In fact, most of the world is covered with water, and most of that water is right here, in the ocean. Which animal lives in the ocean? Remember, flamingos like their home filled with flowers and plants. Monkeys enjoy climbing green trees and like eating fruits, leaves, and even insects. And the whale spends the whole day swimming. So, which animal lives in the ocean? The whale. Very impressive. Even though it is not actually a fish, the whale lives its whole life in water. 
Unlike fish who breathe using gills, whales breathe air into their lungs through a blowhole which is like one big nostril on the back of the whale's head. We've learned about how different animals live in different places. Now it's time for us to return to our story. Will Mickey make it around the world in 80 days? Let's see. And so Mickey Mouse with Goofy and Princess Minnie continued his trip around the world by crossing mainland China. During their voyage across the Pacific, Mickey found himself thinking less and less about money and more and more about Minnie. To make it across the Wild West, our traveling trio resorted to goofy power. Whoa, whoa. The final leg from New York to London would take nine days via steamship, arriving in the early morning of Sunday the 19th, just in time. That is, unless they were to have a run-in with one greedy duck. You're going to love London, and after I pay off all the bills, I'm going to show you the best time money can buy. We'll have a fancy dinner and, and take in a show, maybe even go dancing. <sighs> it sounds so romantic. <laughs> it will be. I mean, uh, it will be. <laughs> it's horrible, it's terrible, and it's awful, too. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Aw, oh, Goofy, what is it? The coal. Somebody dumped all the coal off the boat. <laughs> oh, nuts! Well, we'll never make it on time. Oh, we gotta make it. We just need to think of something else we can use as fuel. Oh, gee, the only other thing I can think of that can burn is wood. But where can we get wood in the middle of the ocean? Bet you thought I was gonna fall. <laughs> Can't be much farther. We're gonna make it! We didn't make it. A whole day late. Huh. This is all the money I've got. You know, it'll get you the fancy dinner and, and the show and the dancing I promised you. You'll just have to go without me. Oh, Goofy. Looks like the orphanage can't afford to keep you around any longer. Here, I I'm sure the pawn shop will give you a fair price for this. Well, I can't take your watch. And I don't want your money. But I don't get it. Well, I'm your friend, Mickey. And that don't cost you a penny. And I love you, not your money. Gosh, really? You bet. Oh, you guys are just swell. Well, time to tell everybody the bad news. Say, do you hear bells? I do. And so do I. But why are church bells ringing on Monday? Unless... We gained one whole day when we crossed the international dateline. That means it's one day earlier than we thought. Looks like he's not going to make it. He's not late yet, Scrooge. Oh, yes, the old boy still has a chance. Five, four, three, two. Welcome around the world in 80 days. Good show, old boy. I knew you'd do it.
And so it came to pass that Mickey Mouse made the journey around the world in 80 days. And he and Minnie lived happily ever after. So Mickey was successful. He traveled around the world in 80 days. I bet he saw many wonderful things along the way, including how people all across the world live. <gasps> Why don't we take a look at how people live in different parts of the world? Sound like fun? Then here we go, apprentice! Oh my, let's take a look at this home. It's an igloo. Igloos are small homes made with blocks of snow and ice. Not just in the winter, but most of the year round. Where would you find people living in igloos? The city has skyscrapers and busy streets made of concrete. The Arctic is chilly and cold all year round. And the desert is hot, dry, and filled with sand. So, in which of these places might you find people living in igloos? In the Arctic. Very good, apprentice. Because there are few, if any, trees or stones to build with, people in the Arctic use snow and blocks of ice to make their homes. You can put your snowshoes away now as we travel to another part of the world. What is this house made of? Why, it's made of stone. We won't find any wood or ice in this structure. Where would you find a house like this one? Some really tall mountains don't have many trees or plants. The rainforests are filled with trees and vegetation. The ocean is made up entirely of water. In which of these three places would we find a stone house? In the tall mountains. Good thinking, apprentice. You're correct once again. The people in the mountains don't use wood or snow to make their homes. They use what's around them all year. And in these mountains, that's rock and stone. Let's roll on to our next type of home, shall we? This is a tent home, and it serves several purposes. It helps protect its residents from the hot sun and strong winds. A tent is also easy to pack up and move to a different location. Where would you find people living in a tent house? Is it in the rainforest, wet and filled with green trees? Maybe in the city, filled with tall buildings and busy streets made of concrete. Or perhaps in the desert. It's hot and dry and the ground is covered by sand. So, which of these environments is best for a tent house? Is it in the city, apprentice? No, it's the desert. Precisely. In the desert, Lightweight tent homes are often made of fabric or animal skin. It's easy to pack up and move around, which is useful for nomadic people who move from place to place. Hold on tight. We're off across the globe once again. Here's an interesting looking home. It's a houseboat. It's made of wood and can float on water. Where would you find people living in a houseboat? The savanna is flat grassland roamed by lions and tigers. The ocean is filled with water. And the farm is where the farmer tends to his animals and crops. Houseboats are found in one of these three places. Let's try to figure out which one. On the ocean. Exactly. A houseboat is found on the ocean. Because a houseboat can float on the water, it allows the home dweller to travel from port to port. Imagine a portable house. <laughs> Apprentice, we're on to our last stop on our learning excursion. 
This type of home is called an apartment. Apartments are individual homes combined in a large building. Where might we find an apartment? In the rainforest, which is wet and filled with green trees. Could it be in a city where many people live in a small area? Or on a farm where animals graze in fields of grass? So, in which of these three environments would you find an apartment? In the city. You never fail to impress me, apprentice. Apartments can be found in cities all over the world. Cities like New York, Rio de Janeiro, London, Paris, Cairo, Moscow, Tokyo, and Sydney, just to name a few. We've learned that people live in different types of homes all over the world, depending on their environment. Now, Let's watch a story about Mickey and his home. In a humble little house that needed some paint lived a tired Mickey Mouse trying to sleep, but he can't. You see, the problems were plenty in this house that he had. The roof always creaked, and the drafts, they were bad. The furnace turned on with a clatter and clunk, making pipes sputter, steam, rattle and plunk. With a slap and a bang, the shutters did slam. This noise, it continued to add nausea. He rolled and he tossed under his pillow and sheets. Poor Mickey was wishing the sounds they would cease. I can't take this racket another night longer. I thought that I could, but I couldn't be wronger. He threw off his blankets and slunk to the sink. Perhaps I'll feel better after a drink. But the water came out in a way unexpected. It sprayed from the drain in his face, misdirected. He wiped off his mug in angry defeat. Ooh, that's the last straw. My decision's complete. I'm fed up with clanking, her slamming and squeaking, the whistling and knocking and roof always creaking. Poor Mickey was irked, a bit peeved, you might say. His mind was made up that he must move away. So he gathered his things and emptied each drawer. The last thing he did was lock the front door. Then Pluto and he marched up the next street where new houses stood, all spiffy and neat. He found a nice dwelling that drew his attention with automatic devices of the latest invention. This house is electric, said the salesman with pride. If you push this red button, you'll travel inside. With the flick of a switch and the pull of a lever, the house is transformed. This is really quite clever. The design's ergonomic. For comfort, you see. Grinned the salesman as he pushed buttons one, two, and three. <gasps> the furniture folds right into the wall. It makes a great shortcut into the hall. This kitchen is sparkling. It's synthetic steel. There's even a robot who can cook you a meal. But how do the floors here all stay so clean? Should dust ever settle, there's a vacuum machine. Are there shutters that bang, slap, rattle, or slam? Not a one, not a bit. Not at all, my good man. I'll take this new house, said Mickey with zeal. After escrow and closing, the contract was sealed. This newfangled house is now where I'll stay. He then thanked the salesman and sent him away. So Mickey settled back in his modern recliner with buttons galore. Ah, what could be finer? Whatever he wanted was his right away. With a touch of a button, he got a snack tray. His chair, it reclined and rubbed his back so. Then on came some music and dimmed the lights low. Said Mickey with a yawn as he scratched on his head. Ooh, it's time for a bath, then I'll toddle to bed. He pressed the red button and rolled across the floor. His chair went upstairs through the new bathroom door. With a splash and a splunk, the brushes did clean. What a wonderful thing, this bathing machine. Special arms then conveyed him off to his bed and tucked him in gently. Then a story was read. Mickey was cozy, all snuggled up tight. But he tossed and he turned as his thoughts did excite of buttons and switches and movable stairs, computer controls on reclining chairs. There's so many things in this house with the play. I want to stay up. I'll just sleep in the day. He leapt from his covers and slid past the clock. He flung open the door but discovered it blocked. 
There stood the robot, its finger it wagged. Before Mickey knew it, by the seat he was grabbed. This just isn't right. I don't need a rest. I want to get up. Stop being a pest. Mickey scampered away, heading straight for the door, but the robot was fast and stopped him once more. That time is fine, but this is my house. You're making me angry. Don't cheese off this mouse. So he turned and he climbed out of the open window and snuck away quietly on tippy tiptoe. But little did he think that out in the back, the robot was waiting for another attack. Enough is enough. I'll take this no more. If you want to play rough, get ready for war. A bucket of water. That's just the right thing. When the robot comes in, I'll pull on the string. Mickey readied his plan with his own little trap. The robot came in and then, with a snap, the bucket tipped over and water came out. It splashed and it soaked him completely throughout. He sparked and he fizzed that man made of steel. He jolted and bolted and began to unreel. Electricity surged in the house all about, zapping the circuits and shorting them out. Food from the fridge was flung in the air. It splattered and spattered in the poor mouse's hair. He ducked and he dodged, but he could not escape. The jelly that hit him was cherry, not grape. Back into the bath he was dragged very quick and repeatedly scrubbed with a soap on a stick. All sudsy and wet, Mickey Mouse tried to flee, but the vacuum was now on a house cleaning spree. The hoses they swung, they flailed, and they sucked. The brushes whooshed past, forcing Mickey to duck. He grabbed up a lamp and began to fight back. But right at that moment, the recliner attacked. Mechanical hands squeezed him up tight, but Mickey was valiant. He put up a fight. When things looked their bleakest and all hope seemed lost, Mickey picked up the chair and gave it a toss. It hit the controls and smashed them to bits. The buttons, they flashed and flickered in fits. Mickey spotted his chance to get safely away. He snatched up his dog and then he did say, This place is a monster, not what I'd call home. He watched that new house shake, sputter and groan. It fell with a crash. In less than a minute, he turned to his pup and said, Glad we weren't in it. Dejected and sad, they both strode away. Mickey and Pluto with nowhere to stay. The rays of the morning added some light, greeting Mickey Mouse with a warm, friendly sight. A little wood house that needed some paint. It wasn't quite perfect, but still, it was quaint. Oh, we could stay here just for a while, said Mickey to Pluto with a wry little smile. Later that night, all warm in his bed, Mickey Mouse snuggled up as sleep came to his head. The furnace, it clanked, it rattled, it shocked. The shutters flew back, they slammed and knocked. The wind, it did whistle round the chimney, it moaned. But Mickey didn't stir, because he knew he was home. It seems our friend Mickey learned that home is where you make it. As we say a fond farewell to our slumbering mouse, let's go on one more language adventure. We learned before that there are many different ways people say hello to one another in different parts of the world. There are also different ways they say goodbye. We'll start our trip back in the United States of America. Did you know there are 50 stars on the American flag? They represent the 50 states that make up the country. Now, remember, in the United States, many people speak English. How do we say goodbye to our friends in the United States? Goodbye. Ah, that's how you say goodbye in English, all right. Let's say it one more time to Mickey. Goodbye, Mickey. <laughs> well done, Apprentice. Let's travel to another part of the world to learn a different way to say goodbye. We've headed south to Mexico, 
to mariachi music and piñatas. In Mexico, many people speak Spanish. How do we say goodbye to our friends in Mexico? Adios. Can you say goodbye to our amigo, Mickey, in Spanish again? Adios, Mickey. <laughs> Very good. This time, we'll travel across the Pacific Ocean. Remember the country of Japan? Origami, the art of folding paper into decorative shapes, is popular in Japan. And it's fun. As you might recall, in Japan, many people speak Japanese. How do we say goodbye to our friends in Japan? Sayonara! What a great way to say goodbye to someone. Can I hear you say it to our friend Mickey again? Sayonara, Mickey. <laughs> Nicely done. Let's see where we're off to next. Welcome back to India. Here's a fact you can count on. Did you know that our number system originated here? If it weren't for India, we'd be numberless. And we learned that many people speak Hindi in India. How do we say goodbye to our friends in India? Tata. Let's say goodbye to Mickey in Hindi once more. Da, da, Mickey. <laughs> you continue to impress me, apprentice. You're right once again. We'll trek across the desert to our next destination. We're back in Egypt. Did you know Egypt is one of the oldest civilizations in the world? As you may remember, in Egypt, many people speak Arabic. How do we say goodbye to our friends in Egypt? Masalema. Can you say goodbye to Mickey in Arabic again? Masalema, Mickey. <laughs> oh, trying out new words is an enjoyable adventure, isn't it, apprentice? Now, let's swim across the Mediterranean Sea. Welcome back to the nation of Italy, home of the ancient Colosseum. We learned in Italy, many people speak Italian. Now, how do we say goodbye to our friends in Italy? Arrivederci. I do like the sound of that word. Can you say goodbye to Mickey in Italian again? Arrivederci, Topolino. <laughs> That's right. In Italy, many people call Mickey Topolino. Yes, it's true. And now let's hike over the mountains again. Of course, you remember France. Did you know France is where you'll find some of the world's most famous paintings, like the Mona Lisa? And in France, many people speak French. How do we say goodbye to our friends in France? Au revoir. Let's say goodbye to Mickey in French one more time. Au revoir, Mickey. <laughs> Well done. Get ready, apprentice. We're off to the last stop on this tour. Perhaps you'd like to enjoy some fish and chips as we return to England back where Mickey started his journey. In England, many people speak English, just like in the United States. So, how do we say goodbye to all our English friends? Goodbye. That's absolutely correct. I think I will say a final farewell in English to Mickey myself. Goodbye, Mickey. 
<laughs> that was a splendid trip, wouldn't you say, Apprentice? <laughs> What's that? Why, it's the sound of happy children all over the world. Though children may speak different languages, when they laugh, it sounds the same. I guess it goes to show you that even though it's a big world with many places and faces, we all have some things in common. <laughs> Our learning adventure with Mickey took less than one day. And what interesting places and faces we saw along the way. Let's use our worldly thinking and get ready to explore. We'll see sights around the globe as we watch this adventure once more. Over a century ago, before airplanes filled the air, I said before they filled the air, thank you, the world was a bigger place, especially for a mouse. Mickey Mouse was the caretaker of the Humbleton Orphanage. Morning, Clarabelle. Looks like you have your hooves full. Yay! Hey! That looks pretty good. Despite his steadfast efforts, the orphanage was in grave financial trouble. Bills? 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 Oh, gosh. How are we ever going to pay them? Say, what's this? Dear Mr. Mouse, congratulations. You have inherited a fortune. Junk mail. Wait a minute. Let's see. To claim your inheritance, your presence is requested at the Reform Club at precisely 6 o'clock. Greedily or Scrooge McDuck. Oh, no! I'm already late! You're late. Sorry. <laughs> Do I still get my money? <laughs> We'll see, won't we? <laughs> For as the executor of your great uncle's will, it is my responsibility to carry out his instructions and bequeath to you his fortune. Oh boy, the orphanage is saved. That is, only if I deem you to be a trustworthy, hard-working, and punctual member of society. <laughs> Gosh, pretty much everybody knows they can trust Mickey Mouse. And gee, uh, Goofy and I have been working real hard running that orphanage. And in regards to being punctual... You mean, uh, <laughs> like not being late? Yes. For example, arriving on time to important engagements such as this. No, oh, for once, don't live up to your name, Scrooge, and give the lad his money. Yes, the old boy's a fine chap. I'll gladly give Mr. Mouse his money. Gee, thanks. As soon as he passes a small test to prove his punctuality. Test? What kind of test? Ah, how about going round the world in 80 days? Around the world in 80 days? But he'd have to catch every train. Make every ship. And never be late. Not even once. It's the perfect test. And you believe today, October 1st, that makes you due back here on the 19th of December at 6.30. Have a nice trip. So, um, if the old boy doesn't make it, what becomes of the money? If Mr. Mouse fails to pass the test, his entire inheritance reverts to the executor. Why, Scrooge, that's you. Exactly. Goofy! Hiya, Mickey. Just taking care of today's bills. Put down that broom and pack your bags. <laughs> We're going around the world in 80 days. Come on, let's go! What's the big hurry? We're not leaving for 80 days. So Mickey and his goofy companion were off, traveling by boat from London to Paris, where they were to catch a train. Having barely made their connection, they took the train to Italy. Brindisi, Italy, to be exact. Goofy, 
Do you mind? Oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry. From Brindisi, they crossed the Mediterranean Sea to Egypt, then crossed the Arabian Sea to Bombay. And all was right on schedule until... <sighs> what rotten luck. There's no way I can make it now. Hey, Mickey, grab your bags. <laughs> we can take this here pachyderm. in time. Beautiful young princess that looks kind of like you marrying somebody else. Oh, well, let's go. Wait. Huh? We can't go. Why not? We gotta save her. Save her? I said save her. Mickey? Psst. <gasps> Who are you? A friend. Did you hear, Scrooge? The old boys reached Bombay. Looks like you'll be handing over that inheritance after all. Not necessarily, but I will make sure that Mr. Mickey Mouse's 80 days are numbered. And so Mickey Mouse with Goofy and Princess Minnie continued his trip around the world by crossing mainland China. During their voyage across the Pacific, Mickey found himself thinking less and less about money and more and more about Minnie. To make it across the Wild West, our traveling trio resorted to goofy power. Whoa, whoa. The final leg from New York to London would take nine days via steamship, arriving in the early morning of Sunday the 19th, just in time. That is, unless they were to have a run-in with one greedy duck. You're gonna love London, and after I pay off all the bills, I'm gonna show you the best time money can buy. We'll have a fancy dinner and, and take in a show, maybe even go dancing. <sighs> It sounds so romantic. <laughs> it will be. I mean, uh, it will be. <laughs> it's horrible. It's terrible. And it's awful, too. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Aw, oh, Goofy, what is it? The coal. Somebody dumped all the coal off the boat. <laughs> Nuts! They'll never make it on time. Oh, we gotta make it! We just need to think of something else we can use as fuel. Oh, gee, the only other thing I can think of that can burn is wood. But where can we get wood in the middle of the ocean? 
But you thought I was gonna fall. Uh, you know, it'll get you the fancy dinner and, and the show and the dancing I promised you. You'll just have to go without me. Oh, Goofy. Looks like the orphanage can't afford to keep you around any longer. Here, I I'm sure the pawn shop will give you a fair price for this. Well, I can't take your watch. And I don't want your money. But I don't get it. Well, I'm your friend, Mickey. And that don't cost you a penny. And I love you. Not your money. Gosh, really? You bet. Oh, you guys are just swell. Well, time to tell everybody the bad news. Say, do you hear bells? I do. And so do I. But why are church bells ringing on Monday? Unless... We gained one whole day when we crossed the international deadline. That means it's one day earlier than we thought. Looks like he's not going to make it. He's not late yet, Scrooge. Oh, yes, the old boy still has a chance. Five, four, three, two. Oh, boy. I knew you'd do it. And so it came to pass that Mickey Mouse made the journey around the world in 80 days. And he and Minnie lived happily ever after. What a fine story we've enjoyed here today. But now it is time to put our big book away. And so, my apprentice, the time has now come to leave my magic workshop of learning and fun. Imagine all the places you learned of today and visit them once more when you come back this way. <laughs> <laughs>